What's up, rockers? Welcome to another episode of the Talk Louder podcast, where we geek out on all things rock and roll. Hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Leave us your likes and comments. You can also leave likes and comments on our Facebook page. Follow us on iTunes, Spotify, Instagram at Talk Louder underscore podcast. And of course, our website, TalkLouderPodcast.com, where you'll find links to our merch and all of our previous episodes. I'm Metal Dave Glessner, along with my co-host, Jason McMaster. And today is a special day for me at the Talk Louder Podcast. We have one of my all-time favorites on the show today. We've got Tammy Down from Faster Pussycat. A uh, quick shout out to Ace Von Johnson for making this happen. Ace, we appreciate it so much. Ace, of course, uh, was in Faster Pussycat for a while and is uh, now a permanent member of LA Guns. Good guy. And we do appreciate you connecting us with Tammy. So, uh, and Jason and Tammy have some history together. You guys toured together and. Uh, yeah, we're on those cruises all the time together. So, yeah, that, you know, that we're, we're quickly turning into furniture on the monsters of rock cruise. Uh, yeah. and I'm, I'm cool with that. Uh, yeah. but yeah, my, my first time to Europe, like ever in my life, uh, lucky enough that my music took me there. Uh, we supported faster pussycat. It was, uh, the almighty dangerous toys and faster. Uh, we did, uh, what seemed like a week in Germany and a week in, uh, in the UK and, and England, the Brit, the British Isles. And, uh, it was a blast. Yeah. And like I mentioned, um, uh, the drummer for faster on that tour, uh, was Frankie Benali from uh, quiet riot. Yeah. So, uh, lots of, lots of history and interesting run-ins. And of course, when, you know, whenever we were out in Hollywood, we always went to the cat house. And so yeah, it was high fives going on there and stories and, and Ricky Rackman and the whole thing. It's, it's kind of historical as I keep saying. So, so yeah, having Tammy on here is like having an old friend, but you know, we're not close, but it's kind of one of those things where you've, you, you keep bumping into each other, whether you're hanging out together or not. It's a constant, Oh, excuse me. Oh, you again. Oh, love you, bro. See you in 10 minutes, you know? Uh, so it's again, a blast, uh, to hang out on the podcast here with. Yeah. Him. And he, he looked great. Uh, you know, he's been sober now for six years, uh, gave up the cigarettes and, uh, just talking to him, you can see there's an energy in his voice and, uh, yes. and, and an enthusiasm in his voice. And, uh, I didn't really know, uh, what, how much time we were going to get with him, but he talked to us for quite a while, uh, answered every question we asked. And, uh, and I mean, I, I had a blast with him today and he's got a book coming out and he's going to capture some of the stuff at some point in this book. He's working on it now. Uh, he tells us a little bit about that. Um, so that'll be somewhere down the line, something to look forward to as well as new faster pussycat music, which has been a long time coming. Uh, they've teased us in the past few years with a few singles, uh, but he's now working on compiling enough songs to either continue putting out singles or possibly compile a record that remains to be seen. But there sounds is like new he music sounds like he wants to make a record. Sounds yeah. like he's trying to get enough and, and put, you know, put it together on uh, vinyl and he'll do all of it. It's going to happen. But sound to me like he was leaning on putting everything together to make a full length record. So, yeah. And I was encouraged to hear him keep rattling off song titles because it sounded like he had quite a few in the works. So this is the first time I've ever heard of any faster pussycat music being talked about in plurals. <laughs> right. So I was happy to hear that. Yeah. Right. Tame me down today on the talk louder podcast. <laughs> Still, mate. <laughs> the hell is that? I'm still yeah. got it. I got some yeah. alert. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm still drinking coffee anyway. Fuck my kidneys. What happened <sighs> to uh, what happened to your AC? You don't have any, or just went out? We don't have any, and the our big fans that we have fucking took a shit. So we got to go to uh, Home Depot. I got one little tornado one that looks kind of works kind of good, but all the other ones are. All the good ones are fucking in our storage locker with our gear. We just got got back from tour, so right. Yeah. Where are you? Uh, where are you staying these days? I'm in Hollywood. 
Oh, well, it's, like an, it's like an old place. I, and I also got a little like wall one that's for in here in the yeah. studio, but it's like we moved shit around before we went on tour. I put a new desk in for the woman. And so all that's not hooked up. So that's, and all of a sudden it's a hundred and it's a hundred here almost, <laughs> but in the Valley, it's like 105. So it's like, it's like yeah. Texas. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, uh, we don't feel sorry for you that much. Yeah. No, but we're we just in Texas. So. It was hot as fuck. It's yeah, hot yeah. every time I'm there now. Yeah. yeah. Got to start doing indoor shows. I know. What the hell? Who, yeah, who what happened to that those? shit? Who <laughs> yeah. booked that shit? I was, at, I was at Ace Freely last night at this place out in Cedar Park. Uh, That's where Tane played. just we, played. Oh, yeah, you were we there. Okay, there. Okay, right. Was it hot? Yeah. Fuck yeah, it was. Yeah, I yeah. Went, went on in shorts. Yeah, the band was. Oh, see, that's smart. I see. I couldn't pull that off. I'm too vain. So. I'm just like, I don't care. I yeah, just no, I know. Look at, my, look at these ugly legs. I care less. <laughs> I'm impressed with how nonchalant you can actually be sometimes. I, I never was. I couldn't. I would be fucking. Now I'm just like old guy that's like. This is it. This is, this is it. what you right. got. This is what and you got. You're I lucky I'm I, fucking still here. I hope when I grow up, I can let all of my inhibitions just melt One away. One of these days. Right. One, One of these days. Uh, it, maybe it'll happen. I need to hang around with you more often. Uh, I hear the la la lamp. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks for joining us today. Yes. Oh, anytime, brother. Thank my pleasure. you so much, man. We've been doing this podcast for two and a half years and you've been at the top of my wish list for all two and a half years. So, well, no, well fuck it. What the fuck? How come I haven't been on yet? <laughs> you had all your friends on here, but not you. I don't. Yeah, care. exactly. They're all like, man, no, you, don't want, you don't want Tammy. He doesn't want to do this shit. He's... Hey, let's talk about your guitar players that you have right now. Wow. Yeah. Uh, they're fucking Some... brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, where'd pretty you, badass guitar where, players. Where did you find just, those fucking guys? I have fucking no idea. I have no clue, but they just <laughs> magically appeared. Because they're and like, aren't like, they like 13 years old? Yeah, they're all like 12 and 13. Yeah, I think we, that's we got I them thought. out of like a junior high school. I think we went like, <laughs> they got kind of busted for like, they thought we were like fouling. And shit. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. You can't, stalking, it, stalking the little kids. You know, you'll get no, in trouble was, for taking Sam across state lines. Sam's Sam's incredible. And yes. you know, we had Ronnie for a minute yeah. and he's awesome too. Well he loves we, you, he loves you guys. You know, he was when I I was at the the Rose Tattoo uh uh little Q and A on the boat on the monsters thing and uh uh you know Ronnie was giving uh, you guys faster, you know, not just uncle Tammy, but every, everybody. And it was like, he said more than once that, you know, his dual citizenship wouldn't mean anything if it wasn't for his family. That is faster pussycat that you guys were family and he wouldn't have been able to even survive, you know, living over here uh, unless he could be in your band kind of a thing he was he was properly propping you yeah uh, he's a good guy like, we go yeah we go way back too because we had we had the art out with us his old band from australia we oh, took right. them okay. to europe we took them to europe with us on a tour and we took did a u.s tour with them too okay so and we shared a bus with them and i've heard of that shared, i've heard it was fun before. uh so i didn't know good. he was in that yeah. Yeah. They're, so they've been good friends with us since back in, I don't remember what it was, like 2011, I think. So. Wow. Okay. So, so but Ronnie, back. Ronnie just, uh, Ronnie went to, to Rose Tattoo. So, uh, where, who's the new guy you've got now? We got a kid that came in to, we got him before the boat. Ronnie was in, but Ronnie, we already had Ronnie. He was coming over with Rose too, anyway. So it was like, he said he still wanted to do it because Ronnie, Ronnie basically has moved back to Australia. Correct. So he could save some money. His roommate died in shit here in Los oh. Angeles. So oh, no. it was kind of a, he was kind of in a weird situation and, you know, and he had an opportunity to go do a bunch of shows back home in Australia with Rose and his folks are there, his dad and stuff. And 
it was just he what he told me is it was just easier for him to go plus i think he was a little homesick as well uh, yeah. for australia because i went there again and i was just like i want to move here i was like i didn't want to leave i didn't want to come back it's just so nice in australia so i've killer. never i've never been but i'm uh, uh dude you gotta go it's i fantasize really... because i mean they make gro- great rock and roll there oh yeah. it's just so it's just nice it's really cool you just go god yeah. i just want to stay here longer and wow. you're just like i just want to move here yeah then you what then you start watching like international house hunters and you're like oh shit. someone's in australia you're like oh i've been there <laughs> oh i want to live there I want to yeah. live. Let's go. Let's go back. But yeah, it was, that was really fun. But I just know that, you know, Ronnie had an opportunity to like regroup, save, you know, get his shit together and back home and save some money and do yeah, that's, you know, that's a little bit of a backstory that I didn't, I didn't know, but you know what? I, I'm, but, I'm, but I, you know, I miss having Ronnie in the band. We have yeah. this kid, uh, Milo. He's yeah. a kid from Burbank. He's, fucking killer he's really good sam was like he was showing me shit that i was not playing right you know and then sam wow. and no i know i'm like really he's like yeah and i go all right <laughs> well, I, I took him up on the okay we're gonna use this kid and he's like he's really good just take him so so yeah. we took him out on this last run we just did and we'll see what goes on we haven't made a permanent decision in terms of anything yet but right well yeah. Mike, he did Mike, a good Mike. job Back to my original question was, I'm just, I mean, and I mean, you did answer it, but it's kind of like y- y- they're falling in your lap. I know. These, I like, keep wi- it, keep, these keep wicked, guitar, yeah, these wicked guitar player kids. And I'm throwing Ronnie in there too. I mean, how did, yeah, no, yeah. Fucking you already Ronnie's knew awesome. Ronnie, but you know, you weren't going one day I'm going to steal, I, you know, that wasn't I, your, I thought too, when I thought when Sam and Ronnie were in the band, I thought it was killer. I, I oh, just yeah. got like, tour we did last year was fucking great and yeah. I, it was a bummer to have ronnie go but i, yeah. I understood so of course and we're still good friends so <laughs> and there's who knows he may be back with us one day anyway so who knows yeah. I don't know. well he's in fuck at the moment he's in fucking one of the greatest historical rock and roll bands to walk of course the, of the earth that wrote the greatest rock and roll combined it's like crossover music i've always thought rose tattoo was like you know, if country music met Motorhead or if blues went to Texas, you know, if, if Texas blues, you know, went to ACDC or yeah. if George, exactly. Jones, I agree. If George I agree. Jones I agree. wrote heavy metal or I don't know, man, you know, it's just like that. Uh, anyway. Yeah, uh, those tattoos always been a fave, you know, a fave since back in the old days. Yes. Yeah. I was, since I was experience the the australian rock thing with like with acdc and angel city and the lime spiders and wow. a few others i can't think of right now but well, it was the interesting you know, the, the first time that i spent any real time in hollywood was you know when the toys were out there working the uh, you know making the record being introduced to that world and and of course we soaked it all up and we of course we went to your place and we went we went everywhere we wanted to soak it all up and we did and we met everybody and we were welcomed everyone was so fucking awesome and nice of course and then uh what i did one thing i did notice we had angry anderson on the show and and i told him this story it's like we we're out there going to all these bars and every band you know, played original material, but they somewhere in their set, they either played, uh, you know, rock and roll outlaw or yeah, rock and roll nice outlaw team. and, you know, one of the boys or something, you know? Yeah. And I was just we like, never, we never did play Rose, but fuck it. I loved it. Other, Cause other bands said, oh, you're playing a Rose. We can't, we yeah. can't do the Rose. You're yeah. doing a Rose. Yeah. <laughs> well, everyone was playing Rose everywhere we went. Every night, someone was covering a Rose tattoo song. I know. That's what yeah. I mean. That's what. Do you think that that was a trend because with guns and nice boys? Do you think that could have yeah. been a trend or was it just. Maybe because... just it was just cool shit. It's just fucking yeah. rock. Yeah. And you can always yeah. just. Yeah. If you, can, if you can get away with throwing a Rose tattoo song in your set, you fucking. You you're cool so but you had to you had to pull it off good too yeah of course right right few bands you're like what the fuck was that 
But yeah. junkyard, junkyard, it fits them. It's like if no one oh, knew totally. who Rose Tattoo was, they would go, "Man, I love that song, Rock and Roll Outlaw." You guys do. So, yeah, they can play know. a junkyard can play the whole set of Rose songs and fucking. If, yeah. they, if someone didn't know Rose Tattoo, they'd just pull it off. Yeah, they could. <laughs> they could. Yeah. So you're listen. You're from. Uh, we obviously we just kind of hang out on this show, uh, but you're you're from uh, North Northwest. Yeah. When did you what what kind of started you off on this whole journey? What got you into uh, this? And is I, is the microphone your the, first instrument? No, actually, it wasn't. Drums wow. started out as my first instrument. And then I was like, I don't want to sit back here. So then I my dad was a guitar player, so I grew up with music. Oh, okay. So I mean, I got a guitar and a drum set when I was for Christmas when I was four years old. So it was like, Damn. and I didn't know what I wanted. It was an electric guitar with a little amp. It was, I was little. And then I got an acoustic guitar, like probably when I was like seven, that was just too fucking big. And I couldn't, you know, right. so that shit sat in the closet with the old Hot Wheels tracks and other <laughs> shit. But I grew up with music with my dad and, and that's something like I always wanted to do. So it's like when I finally started getting in my teenage years and wanted to fucking getting into bands like fucking ACDC and Kiss yeah. and the Pistols and that yeah. shit and just being a teenager, you know, it's just like, I want to do that because my dad's a guitar player. I'll do it. I'll, I'll play drums. And my dad got me another kit. <clears throat> then I ended up taking it back because he fucking gave it to me. And he wasn't really his to give. And then oh, they, were, they were like, I need my kit back. You know, my dad's uh -oh. like, well, I got to get the kit back. George wants his drums. I'm like, you gave it to me. He's like, I got to take them back. So, it's like, <laughs> so I was like, okay, I have no drums now. And I used the friends. And then I was like, fuck that. I don't want to sit back here anyway. So I had, That sounds like a, like a Steven Tyler kind of thing, too. You know, yeah. he's such a... Joey uh, Ramone, Iggy can't, Pop. Can't be, can't be held, can't be caged. Yeah, that was me. I just wanted, but I, but I wanted to play guitar. I didn't want to be a singer. I just wanted to be a guitar player. And then, then I was like, I had no desire whatsoever to sing. It was just a matter of not, not finding one. That and then my friends familiar. like, you want to be a sing our singer? I'm like, I'll give it a, I'll try. I don't, I'm not guaranteeing you shit. So yeah. it's like, whatever this. Yeah. Is. And then I just kind of kept doing it, but I still played guitar and wrote songs and was like we find a cool singer cool and then it was just it just didn't happen i just then i got to hollywood and i'll just i'll be the singer fuck it yeah he could he's singing i can sing as good as him <laughs> and i'm like fuck it i couldn't sing you know i was like as long as i can just keep it in key that's all i try to do so yeah well so, i'm i'm so glad you did because jason's heard me say this a hundred times you're one of my favorite singers and one of the things i like about your voice is the character in it and it's not the kind of voice that you hear all the time it's it falls in that category of like a bob dylan or a tom petty or something not that you sound like that but those guys no, no, have their, thanks they I, have just, their, I agree i like i love both those guys too just for their their uniqueness and what they do so right. yeah, that's cool thank you oh that's yeah cool man shit. thank you it's you've a, given us all the great music i'm glad you to, stepped up to the mic piggyback on david does kind of and I mean, even though we're talking about you and you're fucking sitting right here, chime in when you when you can uh, uh, agree to disagree, whichever. Dave's on to something that I don't know if I've ever put into words. It's kind of like uh, like the guys that Dave mentioned is vehicle for the story being told. Yes. Yes. And and it, it, you don't have to be the greatest technical trained sounding singer to do any Thank God. to do right to do any <laughs> of that shit right well so so here's here's jason brings up a great point because you know as great of a singer say as just let's just say janie lane it wouldn't make any sense if he was singing smash alley the 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 voice that sings those lyrics sure. is what gives it the dirt man and that's yeah. what makes it so unique and cool that's what I always tried to do myself is I just tried to, I was never a singer. I have like, I always say like, I have the, I have a half octave range. So I think that's, <laughs> that's my shit, but I just try to make it sound cool. That's what I go. I can't do those 
yeah. fucking scales and shit yeah. like like watching bass back in the old days thing yeah. dude you're just like what the fuck yeah yeah the fucking kid uh, can fucking he's not only just a pretty kid he yeah. just got the pipes from fucking hell this is t- i'm talking back in the old days and shit yeah and he still fucking can do it and yeah he, he's yeah still i'm just like i'm like i ain't that yeah, right. I can't well, do that. It's kind of like again piggybacking off of Dave. It's kind of like you, you never needed that. And if you would have, if you would have thought for even a second that you needed to do that to do what, what it is that you've ended up, you know the the stories that you've told in your songs all these years. If you, if some point, even early or even later, especially later, it wouldn't have made any fucking sense for you to. Oh, I need to learn how to do that. No, yeah, I, I don't. I just try it. Yeah, I just try to do cool shit, and I just, and I just like as a singer, because okay, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be a singer. I'm gonna try to have to do. I always try to do shit that I can do live so i'm not like faking it you know what i mean yeah. so i'd find shit like singers and that would influence me and and stuff like there was like thunders you know what i mean and the pistols yeah. and yeah. just shit like that that you could do that's kind of nasty Joan jet and yeah. fucking stuff like that that's like it's not that it's not that no. it's just fucking yeah it's like cat claws and fucking whatever yeah. it's like that's what that's what i figured out fuck it i could do that i can do sure. that i just make try to make write some cool words and some cool melodies with that i don't have like that range i'm not like a jeff tate or fucking you know no. I mean, those guys are all cool and shit too but i just that's never been me i could never do it it's just no, I, I, I chain smoked like a motherfucker yeah, yeah so i was just gonna ask whiskey about and so do, so do stuff, they but. Yeah, I was just gonna ask you. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Like, what the fuck? How do you how do you do that? And I but now I don't now I quit and quit smoking and I quit everything. So right. So, so you, for six, you, I will get six that. years. I wanna I yeah. wanna talk about that too. Yeah, right? I wanted okay. well on the subject of your voice, uh since we're already here, I was gonna ask uh you were one of these guys I imagine probably smoked in the shower. You always had a cigarette. Pretty much. Always. I had I'd have <laughs> Multiple ash. I must have smelt horrible because <laughs> I smell it now. I never smelt it. I couldn't smell it. I was immune to it. Yeah, I right. had cigarettes burning, and I'd have a cigarette burning in separate ashtrays in different rooms of the house. This place probably was just awful. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you give up the cigarettes, and but I would imagine that they 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 you know i don't want to say add added as if it was a positive thing but they certainly probably lent a character to your voice that, oh, that when I, I, personally i think you're singing better than ever and you're and you're looking better than ever too by the way oh, so is you. uh how, what, i guess the question is what impact did quitting uh cigarettes have on your voice i think it because i'm older now too my voice is pretty much what it is. You know what I mean? So it made me doing my job easier. It's a lot easier getting up and doing these shows, you know, especially at my age as well. And, and it being easy, you know, usually it gets harder as you get older and doing that shit. It's just a lot easier. And it's like a lot easier to sing too. It's like, I don't, I'm not like this, this trip that I did this year, I did not once have a issue with my, with my throat or anything. And so it was, you know, it, it was good. And so I think not smoking and, you know, then the whiskey, you know, that's you get the whiskey voice and the fucking cocaine drip and the whatnots. But <laughs> there but, you go. Yeah, writing just, lyrics again. <laughs> yeah. Now it's just, now I just have, Nespresso, uh huh, and water, and what, and once in sound check, I have tea, and I hate tea, but I drink it. That sound check, yeah. so it's yeah, like, wow. But well, I also found this. This I'm, I'll tell you later, just because I it's no, nah, totally like go so now. the Sarzos, it's a throat spray, CBD yeah. stuff, but I don't want to yeah. pimp it yet because I want them to make sure they. Hook a brother up with the stuff. So <laughs> oh, you I was mentioned about. It. I go, yeah, okay, what, what you got for me? Because they heard that I used the stuff. 
I use a couple sprays in my throat every day for the run, and not once did I have any issue. Usually, I just all of a sudden one day it'll be like eh, I'll have something weird, like I still have to be lemmy for two days, and then I'll, then it'll be back and be fine. I won't be sick or nothing. Right, it just all of a sudden disappears for a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. if I ba- bail it out, I get a lemmy. It's just a, yeah. I do a raspy show for a night, or maybe half the the next night, you know, yeah. and then it's back. But this time I did not have one problem, and we did. 12 shows in a row, a day off, 11 shows in a row, you know, so yeah. it was like a bam, bam, this run. So, yeah. and I didn't, not once I had any problem with my voice. So that's was, amazing. I, that that's, the proof, that's the proof right there that this has been a positive yeah. six years. Yeah. yeah. He's looking great. He's sounding great. It, it, okay. So, so we're just going to jump all over, all around because that's what we do. All right. Uh, we're talking about, you know, getting rid of bad habits and everything. You alluded to uh, some of your other uh, recreational <laughs> endeavors. I just thought um, he was writing lyrics. I didn't know exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, mean, I was. Yeah. His, his, his past is pretty well documented. And one of the things I've always loved about Tammy is never tried to hide it either. So um, at what 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 prompted you to get clean and how many times did you try and why did it stick this time? And what well, advice? I, and what advice could could I, you provide for someone who might be, you know, thinking about that they need to fucking do that? Fucking nowadays, it's pretty fucking easy. And yeah. you know, you, I I'm so glad I've been sober for the last six years in terms of drugs. You know, I mean, I wasn't a drug addict. I I I was a chain smoker. I smoked like a motherfucker and that's what really fucked up my health. I drank when I worked. I wasn't an alcoholic, but I drank and just did all, all of it together. And the cocaine, I probably did a little bit more coke than I should have done it uh, leading up to there, but I wasn't a coke addict. Well, maybe I was, I don't know, but <laughs> I didn't like, you know, I, I was, I wasn't like, God, I need to get some coke or, or booze. Oh, I need to have a shot in the morning. I was never, yeah, but a fucking yeah, give me half a pack of smokes and I'll fucking chain smoke for that. And that was what that was what hurt me the most, according to the, my doctor. See, I ended up in a hospital. So mm-hmm. we went out there for M3 and I was just like, we did a few shows. We did a show at the Whiskey. We flew out to LA, uh, flew out to New York, did a show that did, took a red eye, flew out the next night, played with guns, I think, in, in Long Island. Then did a Bowery, and then we did a Delaware show. Then I was just like, yeah, I was just not feeling well. And I was like, I thought I had maybe like walking pneumonia or something. I was like, just, I laid down in the hotel and it was like, I couldn't, I couldn't breathe. Then I stood up and I could breathe. I felt like I was drowning. It was just weird. And then, so we went down to Maryland from Delaware and then I went to the doctors and then like, all this shit. So I had, I had uh, congestive heart failure. That's what it was. With my heart working weird, and it sits right between your lungs. So it was fluid in my lungs. So when I laid back, the fluid went back, and it was just like scary shit. So that's what, that's what caused me to quit all the shit. I just quit everything. They were just like, I had a pack of smokes when we were at M three when I got out of the hospital and went to the hotel and was like had a, my pack of smokes and my lighter. Fucking never did it. And when I got back to LA, I had to go in for a heart, heart doctors over at Cedars and fucking never lit up. They put me on one of those patches. Yeah. So that kept me, that kept me and I just didn't smoke. And once you got past that thing and that's, that's the main thing. And for drugs, it was just, it was drugs and the alcohol were easy. You know, the cigarettes was my, my crush. Wow. Yeah. But you know, cocaine and cigarettes fucking that, quitting that shit saved me bucks that was right when smokes went up from like four bucks a pack to nine and then (laughs) and then cocaine's cocaine so (laughs) booze is free i come home from tour with like eight gallons of jack daniels i got i have jack daniels that last me throughout the year and part of the next year as i accumulate more i had a closet just had jack daniels that that, that raises a question so you quit drinking right you're sober Mm -hmm. so uh, your your closet's full of Jack Daniels. Uh, I, I gave it away. I was we, we, say, there's all who, house one. 
housewarming birthday gifts. It's all I got. We'll bring a bottle of Jack. There now it's go. gone because I don't collect it anymore. Right, right, right. Man, what a what a Sorry. fucking story! What a great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, amazing. dude, you're you're like the embodiment of the rock and roller, and that's one why you're one of my favorites. I've just always loved the image, the lifestyle, the lyrics, the music. But I love the fact that at some point you snapped and you chose to still be with us, and and you look happy, and I can tell you're just li- you know living a better life, and I'm glad you're still around. Well, thank you very now, much. When um, you did that, yeah, M- it feels good to be here still. So. When you did the M3 show. Uh, you couldn't go on, and Jason came out and sang some Faster Pussycat songs. Is that oh, right? you, I, I, I did. I did. I, I don't know who you. Yeah, you. I, you did it. I. I was in a hospital. I wasn't even there. You yeah. did it, and Danny did one. I think uh, shared. Did Cher Cher did did. Ted, yeah, Cher did. Yeah, did. Maybe two. Yeah. I think Ted Poley did something. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You guys saved my ass. I was fucking in a hospital with fucking well, electrodes the, on me and shit, just going what the fuck. <laughs> Well, the bad, the bad part of that uh, is, I mean, there's a lot of good because shit, I got to stand where Tammy stands uh, and I had a great time, but here's the deal. The bad is I know that I'm not the only one who was like worried about you the whole fucking time. Oh, thanks. Yeah. That was, everyone was like, everyone was like, I had no in touch with nobody. I was like, except for like, until finally afterwards, I got a hold of Kimberly. And and what they told me when I was in the hospital is like, you had heart failure, you're diabetic now, and you probably have lung cancer, and you probably have kidney cancer. So that's what I left the hospital thinking that I have lung cancer and kidney cancer. So my job was next was to get home to LA, get a heart doctor, and get an oncologist. Yeah. Because, and it, Fucking luckily, it turned out that uh, it was I didn't have any cancer. Like, right. What they thought was in my lungs was the fluid that I told you about yeah. doing that, and the and what was my kidney was just a just a bump. Everybody as they grow through life, get bumps and shit grows all inside you. So yeah. and that's what that was. Is it's just a gross a growth on my kidney, just a little bump. Yeah, oh, that was nothing. So that's that was amazing. Yeah. And who told me I didn't have cancer was fucking Farrah Fawcett's doctor that that I was watching the Farrah Fawcett 20 year wow. anniversary of her death or 25. OK. And it had, I was like, oh, my God, there's my doctor. And he's like the doctor you always remember that says yeah. you do not have cancer. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that yeah. was that was cool. Yeah. Me and my yeah. me and my parents me and my parents and my brothers all went to the same high school that Farrah Fawcett went to. We're both. Oh, from, he did. Yeah. My family's from Corpus Christi, Texas, where she's from. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. We all, we all went to WB Ray high school down there. Yeah. There you go. So, so, um, I, I had her oncologist and he told me I didn't have nice. cancer. So. Very Pretty good. Cool. That's well, a good day right there. The, yeah. uh, the, the thing that I wanted to, and this is, and then we can kind of, you know, forget about it for a second is the story that you just told and all of the sort of like choppy commentary we just said and Dave just basically giving you a big bro hug. Uh, I, I second that, but you, I'm kind of repeating ourselves here, but you sound stronger when you talk. You sound obviously stronger when you sing. I'm walking around the ship, Monsters, fairly recent, walking around during your set. And I'm, you know, people will stop me. Hey, do up, you know, catch up, of talk. And, like, and everyone, yeah, it's, a, it's a five day meet and greet, right? So, <laughs> oh, yeah. but it's oh. during your set and I, and everyone's just, I'm like, I'm, and, and I'm like, you know, someone's talking and I'm like trying to watch faster play and I'm, and I'll, and I'll lean in and go, I'll go, I'll go check it out. And they're like, the first thing they say, I don't even have to say anything. They go. He's never sounded like that before. And I'm like, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so people, people are, are, are thinking and saying what I want them to hear them say when I go, dude, check this shit out. I've been, I've what been the like, fuck is it's that? Been, yeah. since I quit smoking, it's smoking. That's like I said, I wasn't really a fucking alcoholic. So it's a cigarette. It's being able to breathe. Uh, it's just being able to do that. And yeah. just being able to sing. 
like some of the shit that we do, like whether, whether it's on whip or Jack and some of the stuff and it's just like vain and some of this stuff live, it's like when you're just kind of winded, it's like harder, but you yeah, try it. So it's kind of a, but being able to do it without having smoked in six years, it's, it's fun. It's like before I'd be like, ah, here comes vain. I got to fucking get through this one section here. You know, yeah, I think it in my head and be like, just going on my, like, is it going to come out right? Is it going to, is it going to go? Oh. Yeah. So, New so, life. But it's, so, it's here, here, good, so here's something that's, that, that's not smoking. That's, yeah. Uh, and just to be clear, the, the cigarettes and the drugs and the booze was cold Turkey. Oh, uh, completely. Wow. It's wow. All at the same time. Wow. That's amazing. That's a shock to your whole fucking plumbing the only thing i kept was my coffee that's it yeah. that's like my i go i'm not fucking quitting <laughs> that you, and i'm not quitting fucking bacon i don't give a shit well you know it's, it's <laughs> bacon is not my arteries if i'm cutting out everything else <laughs> bacon is not red meat so it's, you know I don't, don't eat know. red meat okay hey, i'll eat bacon. I mean, compared to everything else i think your doctor will let bacon and coffee slide yeah yeah i don't eat bacon every day but i'm, <laughs> so I'm not I, quitting it i want to talk i forbid i, I, I want to talk about your voice a little bit more so uh, there's a couple of things that i feel like i want to either ask you or even suggest to you and the, the, what i'll start with is just in your like uh your your happy go lucky vernacular and your just the way that you answer our questions today and you know your voice is going above what i call the break you know you're going what are you talking about oh you know your inflections yeah. you have this you have this head voice that i don't really hear you use in your music yeah and, but you have it but you have it and I don't think that you had it, or I never noticed it before because, well, you're talking like this to me all the time. Yeah, and then go up and sing it like this. And that's about how loud that you spoke. And it's about how loud that you probably sang. Uh, yeah, exactly. But now, that wasn't... You're like, now that you're like this bullhorn and you got all this uh, energy in your voice, it, it tells me it's like, I'm wondering like in your newer songs whether they're just yours or faster songs or whatever if your range is you were saying you have a half octave which is a, that's a yeah. fun, that's a funny joke but i bet you have more range than you think that you do now i might uh, we're working on new shit right now we got a new we had ghosts that came out just yeah. in january and then uh you guys played it you guys played shit. it on the boat i think yeah yeah i think so yeah. 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 Cause yeah. we played it in Australia and then we played it on the boat. Yeah. yeah. And then we have a new one coming out We're now too. It's called motorbike and that, and we on the B side of that's going to be a cover of don't change from in excess. That's, that's yes. pretty cool. Finally. Finally. Yeah, it's, finally it's, we're going to commit really that. Cool. It's just, it's like, Oh, computer crash yesterday. Cause the fucking heat. So <laughs> the songs the tracks not up. Yeah. Um, I've but, I've been wondering if you're ever gonna put that to tape or digital. No, it's you guys do Ronnie you? played on Ronnie played on it too. He played on the played the rhythms. Oh sweet! We put a little ACDC part at the beginning. That's the. Like, I've heard cool. you do the. I've heard you do the NXS song live, and the the I always, when I first heard, I thought, man, this is an odd choice of, of cover for them, but it works beautifully, man. It's like when you did, you're so vain, that made perfect sense. Cause you and Carly Simon kind of have that grit in your voice. But when you, when I heard that you were doing don't change, I thought, man, that's an odd, that's an odd choice, but I love the way it's it comes. It's such a good, it's, it's such, such a, a good, good song. song. It's, it's just a great right. song. And then for me, again, here, I'm, this is going to sound like the fanboy hour, but your voice on top of that song makes it even more killer. But I, <laughs> my knowledge, it's never been recorded on even a B-side or available any, any way that I'm aware of. So No, it I, wasn't. It's right here. It's like, I'm just finishing up. I had to do a, I had to do a vo vocal of just a one, two, three, four, right where it kicks into a, that was the last thing to record. I just did it yesterday. Now it's like getting it ready for, got all the stems done for Jacob. He's going to, I'm going to send it over him on Monday to fix it. 
So Sorry. are you going to, do you have plans to put out an album? Or are you going to continue to put things out as sort of singles? I've been kind of singles right now, just until we get a b- batch of them. Then we'll, then we'll gather like four tracks and then put them with all those singles and put that out. But we're going to do a box of, I think of the, the vinyl because the vinyls are re- all really cool. And then we'll put all, put, we'll put like four new ones together, whether we put back to back singles that are going to go with them and then put a box set of the singles. Cause with Nola and ghost and now motorbike with, you know, there's three there and then probably two more and that's five track or 10 tracks. And then even though, fucking ghost had pirate on both sides it was just call all of doing a deal with golden robot so got them because nola and and pirate love we just kind of did it on our own we right. just it was coming out of covid and we recorded it we produced everything we did the artwork i got the tracks fucking lacquers cut i had it mastered and all that shit and gilby mixed it and on Nola, I'm just I wanted a really cool package. It's like the cover and the seven inch vinyl. It's red. It's got the label. Our buddy Sam Harris did all the artwork. It looks fucking killer, and it sounds great. You know, seven inch. It's it's a piece of like you know a piece of art. So it's like yeah. plus it's got cool tunes on it. So but it has Pirate Love and from Thunders, and uh, that was another old cover that we started recording that we pulled out. Because both those tracks, Nola was an old song that I started during when we did Glory Hole. And I was going through, when I got sober, I was going through old tracks that weren't done. That was a song that never got finished in time for that record. So, but it was almost done. So it was like, came back in and had, fucking I had Sam. So it's like, let's just go in and retract these fucking guitars. Because a lot of guitars were mine, you know, that I did me and Ace, but even most of them were mine. And uh, cause I wrote the shit. So it's like, yeah. but I'm like, you do it. Right. Way better. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just killer. And it's, let's, and, let's, and, and when you got an idea for this part, and it's like, yeah. And it was like, we did the, got the talk box going and it's just yeah. turned into another beast. And that song turned out great. And then pirate was just fun as fucking shit too. That song is just, that song is so fun to play live. And That's Sam's not- lead on that part, they're split up into Ace and Sam. They're both, both leads are cool, but Sam's lead has just got this fucking bounce to it that I just, every time I'm on stage and I hear it, I just want to, bounce and dance and just <laughs> bounce my head like a bobblehead that's that's how you know it's working don't do that's that. how you know it's good <laughs> yeah it's that's how you know it's color. good so, when you but, guys- so those mm-hmm. but those came out like pirate came out again on ghost because golden robots paying for shit now so they're paying for tracks and and i want and i want nola to come out again too th- through them as well just so it gets more plagues so we'll see what Mark does. Mark's been, Mark's been cool. We'll see what happens. Mark from Golden Robot. And what kind of timeline are we talking about? I'm like, I'm in my, my old man groove. I kind of get shit when I fucking get it, get the shit done. I'm just kind of, yeah. it'll be done when it's fucking done. You know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> I'm not like the old days where, yeah, we go into the rehearsal room for a week and a half and write 10 songs and go, okay. Let's go in yeah, the studio. Well, it's like, yeah. What's your, what's your process? No deadline, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah, deadline. Exactly. There is, yeah. There isn't. I have more issue getting paid when I got to, you know, waiting on that. Now yeah. it's like you pay me, then you get the track. So like, yeah, that's a good, that's good management. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I was just curious because obviously there's been a huge gap of time between faster pussycat material, but in recent years, you've kind of been teasing us with a, a single here and a single there. And I'm asking myself, okay, when does this all add up to an album? Well, when do they all add up to an album? That's <laughs> kind of like the, <laughs> the aspect of it. I, that's what I figured. I figured I'm going to get these song, tracks done, put two out bring them out together whether they're on vinyl and then digitally so they're so they're out there so it's not like so you could wait you could who knows what kind of funk i could get into where it's like okay these other three songs are going to take forever you know i'm not trying i'm just going as we go and yeah. uh getting trying to get stuff done so That's like i said i got 
we got another, we got don't change is almost done. So those two are done. We got a couple others that are track, but not all tracked. It's not all, but it's the bare, the bones are in there. A lot of the vocals are done and but there's a bunch of guitars and a couple of them need some drum overdubs and stuff too. So there's, there's a bunch more in the works though. Great. What's your, uh, what, what's your process in writing? Everybody has a, I mean, it's, it's, it's always really Mine was, similar, but what's your, how do you write? Is it, is it a, a melody? Is changed. it a lyric? Is it a riff? It's changed over the years in terms of, and that all works. That all works. I'll think of a fucking line when I'm laying in bed, I'll be like, write that down. Then I'll, but then sometimes I'll just come in and put down a beat. Just whether it's just a simple boom, ta, boom, boom, ta, I'll just that, and then I'll just run a fucking just a simple like ministry bass riff or just something, something that's just solid, the cure or something like that. And then try to, then I'll come up with either a vocal melody line or a fucking guitar riff that's like something else, whether it's just fucking just rock. And that's, that's pretty much how I did all of Glory Hole and stuff. And that's how I did a lot of the earlier shit too, you know? And then we, I do that. I'd come up with a thing, and then I bring them into the rehearsal room with the guys, and then we bang it out with, you know, with Mark and everybody. But nowadays, over the last couple decades, is basically yeah, just fucking. We got the rig, just fucking work on some riffs, and then bounce. Yeah, what do you think of that? What do you think of that? You know, I'll bring the guys over and just go. What do you think about this? You got an idea for that? You know what I mean? So yeah. then we'll go in like these tracks at like Ghost and Nola and there's a next one of the next ones called Wonderful Life. There's a song called Pretty Ugly that's coming up. And the, those those we went and did drums over at Sorm's place. They're just they're all we did live drums on. I mean, Don't Change has got live drums on it. We did over at Matt's too. So some of those songs are like we worked on started working on them a couple of years ago just then covid and then everything fucking so i was tracking shit and then we're fine-tuning i'm just i'm a nitpicker i always want shit to be if i'm going to put out something i haven't put out anything new and forever at least me myself i want to think it's i want to know it went to where it needed to go before it was finished so it's like the old like days we just record our shit and just hope hope it turns out cool right you know I mean? yeah. got some yeah. producer and some engineer doing your shit and fucking nowadays we're recording the shit i'm doing everything you know what i mean whether doing all the track and wh whether we're doing drums over somewhere else to get that then i bring it in here and edit edit the shit down and do any sound replacing on some of the kicks and snares and whatnot and doing all that shit and then building the shit here so Dude, some bunch of guitars and shit too over Gilby's. He's got fucking. I'm sure shit for doing yeah. all that. I'm sure. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you uh, in uh, in Ghost, you mentioned Birmingham. What's the significance of that? That line is basically was a tribute to my woman, Kimberly. Oh. She's from Birmingham, so oh. it, let me hear to Birmingham, and that I, it's her, it's her in that in that line. Gotcha. Her. Alabama, all this shit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. Crazy, gotcha, gotcha. She's my crazy Alabama woman. Nice. And yeah, I <laughs> mostly lock up the knives when I go to sleep. <laughs> There's I was just curious because I can't the out. fuck is out. <laughs> Song title. Yeah. There you go. Writing lyrics again. Lock up the yeah. knives. <laughs> right. yeah. There you go. I caught that reference and I was like, I wonder if he's talking about Birmingham, Alabama. And if so, yeah. why? Because I didn't know if you had ever lived there at any point. Yeah. But... See, I don't know. Like, yeah, I was wondering if anybody gets it. I know she gets it. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh, yeah. Well, that's the most but, important yeah, part. Like, yeah. yeah, that was it. All the other shit, all the other stuff in the song is all about Seattle. And there's little things in there about AM radio stations that I listened to when I was a kid. I yeah. just remember going to, whether we're out looking for a Christmas tree out in the fucking woods or riding a bus to school and that shit. Just the, the morning radio shows that you'd hear. And nice. Just that, that song just from, you know, it was just, just about growing up in Seattle. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of of growing up, I know you're you're from Seattle, and 
uh, you you dedicated a song on Ripped to Andrew Wood uh, from Mother Love Bone. Uh, it's called Mr. Love Dog. And uh, I was just curious, when you were growing up in Seattle and the music scene was starting to take off and you're obviously, were you friends with Andy or was that just sort of a trip? I met him. Distance? I met him. I knew Chris better. And they were roommates for a bit. Chris Cornell yeah. right. from Soundgarden is like, but I, I'd come home and I was friends with Lane and Mike Starr from, I mean, Jerry too as well, but I knew Lane from way, way before and Mike from way before Alice and James. <clears throat> and I'd come home. I was already in LA. I was already down in Los Angeles, but I'd come up for holidays all the time. I'd come up and stay a month or whatever. Cause I was, fucking working at like retail sled or doing just whatever. So I Christmas time, I come home and just hang out with, you know, everybody and just reminisce. And just, there's all the Seattle posse and all went home back home from that lip, all moved down to LA. We're all up there. So I just was a big, I was a big fan of malfunction and, 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 and Andrew just was just, I uh, was just fucking bummed. When that shit happened, I was just, yeah, just really bummed. Yeah, and that was yeah. just a sad, sad thing. I was like, Cause only- to me, to me, there everybody was like, oh, the Seattle scene and all the shit, and I was like, these, you know, a lot of them, they're like, they're all of my friends. So it was like, I was like, stoked about it, even though it was killed, pulled the plug out of our shit. You know what I mean, and <laughs> everything around it. But it was like, but they're all my friends, so I wasn't fucking mad. I was, you know, yeah. I was just like, these are my bros or whatever. And yeah. I was ready to, at that point too, I was ready to, you know, do, and I was getting into different shit as well. Just, yeah. just I trying could, to grow. I could hear your yeah. growth. I could hear it. I was paying attention. Well, you, you went and did uh you did a phase there where you were doing like industrial type music. You were in pig face for a while. And yeah, you know, we that's went to cool. Chicago and that, and that's yeah. when all that, shit was going it was fun it was just learning different shit that was like at the end of faster during that early 90s that's when i was i learned recording because back in the old days i didn't i didn't know shit i just show up at the recording studio and they had some mics set up and i'd be like cool all right maybe in the room i had no idea what any button did except for like a fader that you know, Sounds that familiar. might not even work, you know, but yeah. Yeah, I learned about recording. I learned about gear. I learned about all that shit. Then I learned about all the MIDI shit. Then I got Pro Tools when it was called Sound Tools back before it worked like it was a piece of shit and it was expensive and stupid, <laughs> but I got it and I started learning it then. So yeah. I just got, I, I found it as another tool. Yeah. I, I got samplers. I had fucking four Kai, fucking S2000, S1000. I had Roland. I still have my K2000, my Kurzweil. I got into samplers because it was fun because I, I didn't have, I didn't have a two inch machine. You know what I mean? I had a, I had samplers. I had, a, a, I had a, like an eight track cassette that I synced up had the MIDI so it'd trigger all the samplers and I'd record good whole guitar riffs that like the burst parts were that that was on that sampler and I'd play it and I'd sync it up but it's all my shit it's just another palette you know a tool yeah. of doing shit and then other bands that were doing that shit I go that's cool fucking learning shit but learn how to blow out distortions through my pre's and APIs yeah. and just learning a bunch of that. It was just fun. It was just like, see how, how much distortion we can get and then compress it and flatten it and fucking using the school of ministry and fucking yeah. nails and shit. Even yeah. before nails, it was, yeah. you know, KMFDM and ministry and pig yeah. face. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, so it was, it was fun learning that shit from a bunch of those people. Like guys that's, at Guy Warsaw and that Warzone sounds like in my, Chicago. That sounds like my wife's record collection. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, it was fun. Yeah. It was a fun. I li- I went and moved. I lived in Chicago and I lived in the heart of all that. And it was I made a lot of friends. I was only there for like a year, a little over a year. And then I came back to L.A. and started doing the Newly Deads. Yeah. And, then, and that was doing really good, too. We were just getting ready to start. We were going to go out with Danzig for 
like a month and a half, two months of us. But then fa a faster co tour came up with us and guns. And I just took the new he does and with Greg and Brett and merged it in. Yeah, and, I see that. That was, that was a, that was a, that was a fun tour too. That was, was a good a, idea. That yeah, was a it, really good it, idea to sort of like, you know, not only I'll, I'll just won't mince words, take the, take the money, you know, do, do the faster tour, but take what you had and the things that you learned and sort of morph it into what it was. I think I saw that tour. I think I saw we, it. It was cool as shit. We had yeah. the fucking shit going. We had a remix version of bathroom wall that we did. That was had yeah. so much bottom end. We had a giant fucking Kabuki that was fucking strung up to the ceiling. And as soon as the fucking kicked in, it fucking dropped. It was, we look pretty fucking evil. It was fucking, it was rocking. It was badass. It was, it was a fun time. I thought, I thought that was really cool. Some people thought it was a little bit, you know, too industrial or whatever. It, it was fucking rock. It was rock with some, some sure. edge to yeah. it. So I'm like, I go, I need fucking industrial. It's still, it's still, yeah, it's, it's still a it's, fucking floor on the floor and fucking, yeah. That's right. And slamming. It, I, right. I just, I thought it was fucking cool shit. So yeah, that, I mean, right. that tour was fun. And just to get out there. I mean, Greg only lasted a few weeks on that tour and he went back. He, he wasn't built to come back out. Me and Greg are still great friends. We, I talked to him all the time. Oh, good. But yeah, he went home and then guns filled in for Greg's spot on that tour. And then when guns were off the tour, Tracy still came out with us for the last week and a half on the West coast. And, Build in that that was fun. Oh, so, oh, I bet. Yeah, that would have been fun to see. Yeah, Tra Tracy's yeah, another good. one of my another one of my rock and roll heroes. Yeah, Tracy's underrated, man. He's underrated. me and Tracy go back too. We're like fucking. I knew him be when I first came to LA. Before I knew pretty much anybody. My first friend in LA was Izzy, but wow. But tr I ended up with Tracy out in Covina with his fucking girlfriend out of his mom's and her mom's and shit out there broken down and like me and tracy been that was when i was probably 20 so it was before wow. i was even old enough to get in the bar so wow yeah, me and tracy go way back we and we've been friends ever since so. that's that's kids man your kids that, that well, last we tour were. that you put together last year was was great uh that was fun. la guns and tom Kiefer. that oh. was a great package right there yeah, it was a good one. We had fun. Yeah. The routing was fucking shit, but I was thanks to Tom, but but the shows were all killer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, I was wondering if you <laughs> if you had one of those. Ah, yes. I fucking think I do. Yeah, that's and this. I think I just got it back from uh That's a giant I, subway poster from the, the Europe tour from the, that we did with y'all. Exactly. And I have I have my passes too I oh, oh yeah i might have my i might have one of those i've got one doing... from i've got one from uh one of the german dates we did too i think it's dortmund that we did was, was that the first thing. time for both of your bands to go to europe no, no we they, went they the, had, we, that was our were, headlining yeah they were that already there headlining. opening for guns and roses we did yeah. that we did that where's my shit man God damn it I well, had my I'm, I'm I had my dangerous toys pass right in this. I'm impressed that you were that you're a pack rat like we are and <laughs> keeping your nerd fest alive. I found them all like and I got a bunch of other shit too. My mom my mom's been sending me the stuff back down here. I don't know where I put it somewhere. For, but for they were, listener, they were right here, but they they for were listeners who are not who are not watching this, uh, I aimed my camera at a a giant faster pussycat dangerous toys almighty tour poster from winter 1989 and tammy's just quit searching for his pass from <laughs> I, I can't find it i don't know where i fucking put it it was right in this drawer with my other with my motley from that, that same that, period all right that, that poster was in my house for about 10 years wasn't it yeah, I didn't have a wall to hang it. I still don't. That's why it's on the fucking ceiling. Yeah, right. And it's bigger. I than... have I have that poster and the guns one. Those I've ones all... are together, rolled up. They're all from yeah, from the UK. Dude. Those big... 
Dude, I, I, I got that poster, of course, obviously with my own hands off of a fucking wall in like London or some shit when we did the hammer. Oh, you, y- you yanked it? Yeah. Right and on. I rolled it up and I, on the plane all the way home, I think I had it like between my legs. Like it, I oh, didn't want it did. to get fucked up. <laughs> right I mean, you know, they're going to shove it in an overhead. You know, I didn't, oh, have, I, know. A, I didn't have a tube for it. So it's been baby. I want, I mean, how many years ago? That's winter 89. That's fucking shit. 30, got, fucking, that poster is older, older than this shirt, you know, it's older than all of our shirts. It's older than all of our shirts. It's older than that dirt out there in the yard. <laughs> Speaking of tours, Tammy, what was the best uh, arena was- tour you did? Uh, when you guys, I mean, I know you went out with Motley, you went out with David Lee Roth, you went out with White Snake. Which of those big arena tours uh, was we the most Cooper. fun for you guys? Yeah, Cooper that's was right. Really, Cooper was a lot of fun just because yeah. the whole, their whole fucking production and all yeah. of their whole crew of people were just fucking killer. But Molly tour was fun because they were all sober apparently, and we weren't. So it was <laughs> like it was basically it was our party. The Motley tour, the Doctor Feelgood was our feel good to it, but touring with Cooper and we did a bunch of dates with motorhead and shit too. So that was fucking, that was cool with Coop. And they're all, they're all, they are all part of my life. You know what I mean? Yes. And they're all fun. Yeah. Roth. We're like, ah, we're going to go out with Roth. It's like Ben Halen. And it was like, <clears throat> we saw him like once the whole fucking tour. Oh yeah. It's like, <laughs> that was when we, that was when we, that was on our first album too. We're like, yeah, we're going out with Roth. We're going to be hanging out, partying with Roth. And it was like the first day we saw him, and then it was like the last day. <laughs> Say, hey, what's up? I've got joint. Let's smoke the joints. And last night, it was like, cool. That, that's pretty really typical, though. Right? That's pretty typical, right? Everybody has this romantic notion that the bands that tour together are just partying together, and they're hanging out all the time, and you're basically ships in the night. Yeah, because you're by the time you're done playing, they're freaking. You got your own shit going on. Unless your your buddies are going on fucking. Like I, when we were, it was just us over there. So it was us and the Almighty, and we're out there, and it was like all all three bands are killer. So it was like, yeah, but was... you didn't see, but you didn't see everybody all, the whole show all night because you had so much shit. You had shit with Wea, where we did with Wea. You guys would. Who are you guys with RCA or no, it was uh Sony. Universal Sony, Sony, that's it. Yeah. Sony over there. On yeah. Columbia. So Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew it was yeah. different than we are, but yeah, you have all that shit they had. They're my American band, so they're like yanking you here and there and as soon as you yeah. dry off or whatever, but yeah, that but was I mean, fun. It's, everyone was staying at the same hotel. It wasn't everyone oh, yeah. was moving. Everyone was moving and grooving on the same train, you know? Uh, oh yeah. We all had fun hanging out and shit. Yeah. That was fucking great. Now, now, I want to bring this up because a lot of people don't know. I don't know if it's been any, uh, quote history books or not, but Frankie Benali did that tour with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he he did, and he did Molly with us too. So oh, he did. He after. I, yeah, and it was after Motley. Uh, yeah, cause, and after Motley, it's when we got Bradshaw. Yeah, so. okay. So speaking of your drummers, one of the great mysteries in rock is what ever happened to Mark Michaels? Don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody, Nobody knows. knows. And, me, and me and Greg deal with all the bullshit with the fucking first three records. Nobody knows. We were tracking down. We put in searches and... Wow. Financial shit. No one knows. I I believe he's dead, honestly. Uh-oh. But I don't I don't have any proof, so I don't know. But no one's seen him forever. I, last I heard he, he was seen that was like when back on uh on the whip tour. He was in Atlanta. Then I heard he was in New York and heard he got clipped by a cab and, and he was slow ever since then. And mm-hmm. that's that's hearsay. I have fuck. I can't remember who in the fuck told me. I don't know if it was Mark Rude, who's now dead, but it was somebody in New York that was, I think. So there was no like, and it was somebody that was kind of fucked up. So I was like, cool. So I don't know. Right. Wow. I had nobody knows. I had some other kid. Uh, I don't know if it was a kid, but email me trying to find him. He was doing some punk rock thing, and 
and trying to track down Mark because he was from Vegas and all this stuff. And I go, dude, I don't know. And they were searching. We had, we recently had, we were moving our stuff from, uh, from an old LLC that was faster. We have a new one that I do with the new band, which is my shit. So we're moving all the three earlier records to the, from the Electra because we got all of our shit back from them wow. to a different to a different LLC, which is Gypsy Fetish, which is our publishing company that we had for those three records. We still have with ASCAP and shit. So, and we're trying to find you know, even though Mark didn't write anything, he's still part of the band on the performances and stuff yes. like that. So we split it that way on those records. So it's like to give him, you know, he played on it. So it's yeah. like, but nobody could find him. So know? speaking of Electra, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, belted, belted, booted and buckled. Belted, buckled and booted. Okay. Yeah. So that, that was just a, that was just, what was a fucking nonstop single, wasn't it? Yeah. Nonstop is on there. You're so vain is so on vain, there. And so there's two tracks from the whipped sessions. That didn't make whipped, but they're on they're that. on the they're on the import. They're on the Japanese version of the vinyl. So out with a bang and charge me up those two songs. Yeah, Vane was just that they put that out because that was on Vane was on Rubiot. That was Electra's 40th anniversary. That was that, but that was done too. And that was what they started. That was the whole new thing with CDs. It was called like a CD five. Or whatever it's basically a cd single for non-stop so it was a non-stop to nowhere cd single but it was cd5 it was new it's what, what they is- electra or we or whatever they were doing so they go let's put vein on it we'll put fucking the two two tracks that are on that uh on the japanese version of the album because that's japan wanted two different songs for their for the Wii of uh, Warner Brothers, I guess it, I can't remember, but that's what that was. That was was it? Was cool. it cool? More shit. Was More it stuff. widely distributed? Because I've never even seen one in the wild. I I've, I don't I'm not, fucking know, dude. I have no idea. I know I got a couple. You know what I, I mean? Think, I, like, I think I, don't I, know. I used to have the Ruby Hot thing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's a different thing. I yeah. still had the watch. They give me a watch. I, Weird. It was always in a box. I never wore it ever. Weird. Weird. <laughs> hey, hey, here's a Ruby really Odd thing and a watch in a box. And it was like, wow. And yeah, mine, did, mine didn't it was have not a even watch. Like, it, was, it was a yeah. dumb watch. We had... Uh, anywhere, uh, ever. We've had your buddies uh, Ace Von Johnson and Ricky Rackman on this show, and, and we owe this interview today to Ace for uh, connecting us with you. So oh, cheers right. to you, Ace, if you're listening. Um, but your buddy Ricky is out doing a comedy tour or a spoken word tour or whatever. Or whatever the fuck it yeah. is. Yeah. And, he's, um, just, he's just out shooting the shit and getting paid. Yeah, to exactly. Like, his perfect, his perfect job. I love yeah, it. <laughs> exactly. So I mean, you guys obviously were business partners in the cat house, and he's out touring telling stories about that time. And the stories, uh, I'm sure, are just hilarious. And so I wanted to know from you, what's what's the craziest thing you ever saw, witnessed, or took part in at the Cat House? Oh, God, I don't even know. The, the Cat House is like, I think it was Axel chasing Bowie. I think that might have been the, <laughs> yeah, we, the crazy we've heard, shit. We've heard that yeah. one. And that, that was all weird because I was just like there in the booth and Bowie was there and drunk. And I was just like, because we were rehearsing right next to us. They were out at Mates, too. Mm. They were, we were out there rehearsing for something and they were t- doing a Tim machine. Oh, right. And then we were at the club and, you know, I'm in there with Joseph. I'd go up there and smoke and hang out in there and hang out with Billy Gibbons and shit. And my Bowie was in there. And I know that Bowie was like fucking Joseph's fucking idol. You know what I mean? It was like, Brooks, our DJ, and and then all this shit. And I was just in my own world. I'm having a drink, smoke, going and doing whatever, whether I was with somebody or hanging out with chicks and just doing my schmoozing. And then all of a sudden, I saw I saw Aaron there, and then you know, of course, I always see Axel and whatnot. And we're friends, and but then I didn't know what happened. Then I got filled in by Josh and fucking Ricky and 
everybody about just Bowie just being a fucking dipshit. And, you know, and Axel gets fucking, he used to get set off like a fucking instant. Do anything. He'll set Axel off. Well, I'm going to go fucking kill somebody. And it's like, <laughs> so I was like, and that was just the whole debacle. Because I was friends with Aaron, too. And she's like, oh, this fucking just crazy. And I'm just drinking, just going, Good luck with all that. I'm just like, whatever. I didn't fucking, I didn't want no part of it. You guys chase each other down the street, do the fuck ever you want. But, but in terms of just crazy shit with Ricky, I don't know. He was my roommate for a minute too. So it's like, we, we both, like we talk about the shit cause I'm getting ready to do a book. Well, I'm doing a book right now. Nice. Right. And we, and we like throw shit at each other. Just going, fuck. He's like, I don't remember. I got it on either. I got a fucking like, what happened that night? I can't remember. I'm too wow. old. I forget. <laughs> so we rely on our other friends. Oh, yeah. We pull up Keith Cooper and fucking some other friends of ours, Tip and other friends just going, oh, yeah. Just to start fucking bringing it back into the old noggins and remembering shit that we did back then. Because it, it was a lot of, you know, it was a lot of years of just every night, every Tuesday night fucking tearing shit up you know what i mean every i remember showing up there and jonesy be holding up the building with his bell bottoms and his unbuttoned shirt and his harley parked out in front looking like robert plant you know that was jonesy and i'd sit there and shoot the shit with jones for like the first 10 minutes i got there i'd just be hanging out with him outside and that fire and gasoline record that fire and gasoline record was unbelievable man it was killing. And we just, yeah, we'd be sitting there about Steve Jones. Jones. Steve Jones. We, we'd be watching these, just watching chicks coming into the club, just hot chicks walking through, and then Jonesy would always be like, you fucker? You fucker? <laughs> that's like, no, that's my thing with Jonesy from now on until the day we die. I'm like, you fucker? You yeah. fucker? <laughs> I, bet, I bet you fucker. <laughs> and I'd just look at him, and, and that'd be our thing every fucking, every week. Well, mostly every week, not every week, but pretty much, <laughs> especially in the summer. Jones would be out there looking steadily. That's too. That's the young bull and the old bull sitting on the yeah. sitting on the hill, looking down at all the cows. Is what that is. Well, yeah. Well, well, Tell me fucking... about uh, Nikki Hopkins playing on on Whipped. That I know that had to be a a, a real, you know. Uh, he was the coolest motherfucker. It was just. We got Nikki Hopkins coming to come in and play piano. I'm just like, I was just like, just blown away. And he was just you're a Stones a fucking, guy, right? Yeah. And I was just such a fucking, I was not, you know, I was not expecting it. You know I mean? It was kind of like one of those things. John made some calls and fucking just happened. Wow. And just having him. And then before, before that on wake me is having, you know, having, uh, Getting the harp, Jimmy Z blowing the fucking harp on on house, yeah, you know, from fucking rhythmics and all the shit Jimmy Z's done. He even did sax on some shit too. That was that kid's that's the kid He's fucking cat is just a another one of those talented dudes that are just cool. Yeah, I Jimmy knew Nicky Hopkins just, had to be a highlight for you because I know you're a big Stones fan and and. I looked just, him up to see and just exactly. what he did. Just fucking just sounded so awesome too. It was just cool. Yeah. It sounds great what he played too. Um, I wanted to ask you about your, obviously your biggest single, your biggest hit house of pain. Um, and, and I don't know how much you want to go into this, but uh, it's obviously autobiographical. It's a song about your absent father. And, but on the other hand, as you mentioned earlier in our conversation, your dad was also sort of responsible for introducing you to rock and roll and, and basically putting you kind of where you are today, as far as your passion for music. And then the, oh, and yeah. of course you had to have the drive to succeed, but were you ever able to reconcile those two uh, emotions, you know, as far as feeling, feeling the love that he uh, turned you on to music, but also, sort of the i don't know if resentment is that comes across yeah, I, yeah I talked to I talked to him 
probably about a year before he died. I think that was like in 2011. I talked to him. I called him. We were in Cleveland because he had moved there. So I was just like, I told him that, you know, shit was cool. One of the main reasons I was pissed besides all that shit was just basically the shit he treated, you know, said, he just bullshitted my sisters and shit. I was just like, then my sister's like, yeah, I talked to dad. I go, what do you mean you talked to dad? I go, I don't talk to him because I had your back. You know what I mean? I didn't. So, but I talked to him and said shit. You know, we were all young. He was young. You know, when that shit, I, you know, took me a little bit of time to grow up. By that time, it was 2011. I was like fucking in my 40s or whatever. Fucking yeah. like 12 years. Yeah. So I was like, everybody's, you know, does shit different shit when you're a kid you know people live their lives different but you know there's that like song ghost that's kind of like another kind of being cool you know and giving them some creds yeah. for that and then like i mentioned earlier too we have a song called wonderful life and that's basically another song that i wrote i started about i don't know probably eight years ago and then it turned into a, a couple different things, but I had brought that up into it's called you know to, to basically thanking him for oh. thanking him for a wonderful life, you know. So. Wow, yeah, I didn't mean and to get all heavy on you, but oh, no. <laughs> uh, but I knew there was sort of that uh, juxtaposition between you know obviously you appreciate the fact that he turned you on to music, but uh, there was also a part. Oh, he was my he was my hero when I was little. You know, what I mean, all the way up until I was like, the fuck. You know, there are some issues and stuff that that he just did as a fucking dick. You know what I mean? It's just when you gotta, you know, I'm sure he was in a fucking weird place with his I don't know, with with his life, and I was a you know teenager and. And I was just rebellious and just like, fuck you then. You you know, thought you're supposed to be, you know, have my back. And you're, you know, you fucking you accused me of like stealing his weed. And I didn't even smoke pot. So I was just like, I was like, fuck you. And that was the final thing. That's when I was like, I'm out. And I moved down to San Diego to my mom's. So then I quit the bond. Then I was in the bondage boys and left. And that's where that ended. And then when I went home for Christmas, I'd fucking avoid them. You know, what I mean, I wouldn't even, I didn't want anything to do with them. So, it's like, wow. Well, I'm, uh, I'm glad to tough. hear you. You found some peace in all that. At a, at a yeah, we. I talked it. I told him everything's cool. I go. Yeah. I wanted to also ask you. I'm from San Antonio, and uh, you and Brent got arrested at a gig oh, in San Antonio. And I interviewed Brent uh, not long after it happened. I wanted to hear your side of the story because I thought it was hilarious that you two guys went to jail in your full stage regalia with your eyeliner and your big earrings and your scarves and all this stuff. Uh, and I was wonder, fucked up. How uh, did that? How did that go over in jail? <laughs> uh, that was like it was a drunk tank in La Samada, yeah. fucking right. in fucking doing a free show. For the fucking city of San Antonio, for the JCs, and it was they had no state security. All they had there was you know, big festival stage, chain link, and some fucking sawhorses. Mm -hmm. Fucking no no security. So they were like kept telling me to tell them to move back, and I'm like, it's not my fucking job. My job is to play a rock show. You want you tell them to move back and whatever. It's like the cops. And I go, police should get off their ass to do the job themselves. And that's, they didn't like that. So, oh. and then Brent got just a little smart assy with them too. And I knew it. I knew that they were going to fucking, I, I was the last to come off stage. And I just knew it. I knew they were going to fucking grab me, but I didn't do anything wrong, but I just, and they did. And then we ended up in fucking a drunk tank in fucking San Antonio. Just smelled like urine. So it was like just, just a bunch of, a lot of drunk Mexicans, you know, just passed out with their hats and just like, that's what it mostly was. There was some trailer park, whatever, too. But it was all mostly because it was Las Mata. It was party. It was right. party night in San Antonio. So it's like, 
But it was like, yeah, being on the drunk tank, it was just like, oh my, it just took forever for us to get. We were, and we didn't go like in a cell. We're just in a room with like 30 fucking, and glass. It wasn't like you see in the movies where it's bars and shit. It's yeah. like plexiglass. So there's no air, it just smelled like piss. It was just fucking. Oh, what kind of looks so, are yeah. you? And at that time, I was like, we had a, we were in a killer hotel because so we flew out for just that show. <laughs> <laughs> I had was had us dating somebody that was from uh, San Antonio, that was there, and it was like just the whole time just waiting at the jail for me to get out instead of hanging out at the hotel. You know what right. I mean? What kind of looks like, are uh, you getting? And what, what kind of looks are you getting from the cops and the other you know drunks and whatnot? Was, you guys are dressed what? up like the New York Dolls, oh, basically. Was, oh, I know. There's, they were like, whatever. I'm just like, bring it. If you're going to get most of everybody was, it was like a drunk tank. So most people were just like, oh, <laughs> nobody was like, look mean. And they all just look just wiped out. You know yeah. what I mean? Or, <laughs> or scared themselves. You know what I mean? But I remember them taking our fingerprints and like, yeah, we got Ozzy and we got you. So it was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's what they said. I'm just like, that's you a, didn't see any of your friends in there. No, it's just good. must, just must cat. Yeah. In his, yeah, in his, yeah. In his velvet, in his you, velvet. You went there with his, with it, with your friend. Yeah. yeah. Here, here's another uh, weird question. I found this on the liner notes of the wake me when it's over record. Uh, you credit the psycho night manager at the holiday inn in Hollywood, Florida. I What's saw that? that just recently too. I was looking, I go, I forgot we did that. So I was reading, I'm going through a bunch of old shit for the book. Oh, that was this fucking, yeah. Hollywood, Florida, some hotel. That, he fucking kicked us out. He was psycho. And it was just, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I just remember us, you know, we had a tour bus and shit and fucking, and we just got kicked out of the hotel because the guy was on crack. He's like behind a glass. It was like a weird hotel too. It looked nice, but then there was this office that had you know, fucking Hollywood, Florida, middle of the night. There's bulletproof glass in these fucking so We're all young and we're all young and just you know that was that was on what on the Wake Me credits. Yeah. yeah. So that was on our first tour. I think we were out with Roth or something down there in Florida. So we weren't in the best hotel and fucking. I don't remember exactly what happened. Someone remembered. I think I was talking to Greg. You know, he he had brought it up, but I, I just remember the psycho, and I was just going, "Fuck!" You know, we were just like, "Fuck you!" And I like, "Fuck you!" I'm calling the police. And Warren was with us, our manager, Warren and John, and they were like, "Just go, get on the bus, get your shit out of your room, let's go." So that's <laughs> that's all I remember. And then we just fucking we always thought it was funny, so we had just added that to the credit. For, I, I knew there had to for be this, a story just for this. You, this for this question, like how many years later? 30, <laughs> right. five years later. Yeah. <laughs> um so you're you you famously sold or gave Slash his his first top hat. Um Yeah, I sold it to him. I gave him part to- part of it. I gave him a discount. He did not steal it. He did but not I told steal him it. Say, I told him he could say he stole it. I my my question is later, did he ever- not then. Did he ever return the favor? Oh, no. No, <laughs> no I guess he did. They took us a gear up with them and they That's brought us over. Right? He did it. And, yeah. he's, and he's always been a fucking sweetheart and a nice guy. So yeah, he's, he's always been a friend. He's, he's always small. been a friend. He's always been a good, good dude. Yeah. Since yeah. I've known him. Tell me a little more about the book. Uh, how far along are you? What's the process? Is, is there a, God, I know you're weird. not much on deadlines these days, but no, I, I told them, I got, I, I told, I'm doing it with rare bird. They did, um, they've done a bunch of, but they did Krabi's book and they did Matt, one of Matt's books and they, uh, Sammy Appa and some the, the guy Tyson's really fucking cool. And they got these guys that are, uh, Writing at our, they did Matt's book. They're from Sweden. So we met last summer at the end of summer here to just meet. 
And then we then went through the process of, okay, yeah, those guys are cool. And then we'll dealt with shit. And then in January we hooked up, I think it was January. And then we hooked up for like three or four meetings here in Los Angeles. And I've been gathering shit and trying to timeline stuff. Cause it's not just faster. It's my life. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's a lot of shit to remember. And a lot of shit happened fast. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, from, yeah. from like all the stuff that happened, happened fast, you know, when coming to LA and then putting faster together and then being signed and being on tour and then being over, you know what I mean? And then yeah. the next thing, and then the next thing, yeah, it's all quick. So it's like, it's a fucking blur. You know what I mean? And just trying to gather shit. You know what I mean? There was the days of those weren't the days of cell phones and photos and that shit going right. through boxes of old shit. That's why I said I'm having my, my mom's been shipping me shit down that. I, a lot of stuff I sent back up there because I was going to move back to Seattle back in oh. back on the, when the shit fell down, like the whole bottom fell out of faster and stuff. I was like, fuck it. I'll just move back up to Seattle. I got all my friends that are up there, all the chains guys and all that shit. It's like, but then I was like, then I moved all my shit up there, but then I was like, fuck it. Let's go to me and Mike moved to Chicago instead. So it's like, I went there and bought new shit and I left my, house full of furniture in my sister's garage there for like 15 years i told her just get rid of it get put the boxes take use the furniture or just give it away whatever but yeah they, they bought a house and i filled their garage up with my gar shit for fucking forever <laughs> he's still sending me shit back <laughs> So. I, I also wanted to ask you, we're speaking of Seattle, uh, you talked a little bit about, you know, uh, the Alice in Chains guys and Chris Cornell and, and Andrew Wood. Um, Nikki Six and, and Duff McKagan also spent some time in Seattle. Were you familiar with those guys when they were living there or were you not around? No, I didn't. Nikki was already gone because I met Nikki's sister in Edmonds right before I moved to down to San Diego first. I'm in San Diego first because my mom moved there. But Duff, I met. I didn't know Duff. I didn't. I was like, my Seattle scene of music was months, and then I was gone because I I was into buying Bondage Boys. I was underage. We played like two bars that I couldn't even go into. You know what I mean? I just go on stage and then come off, and that was it. And then a couple skating rink gigs and shit, but. We go to shows, and that's how I got to know. I mean, I got to know Mike Starr and Lane from before that too, and then I got to know Chris and you know met Andrew and stuff later. Back when I'd come up for Christmas and shit, even well before I had Faster Pussycat, I'd still come up, okay. <clears throat> come up to visit home. Because oh, we're driving up to Seattle. You want to go? And I got cool. And I go up and stay at my mom's and ping pong and my all my friends, and then okay get a cheap plane ticket home. So come back to LA and then do that. But I'd always make it a point even later after we got signed <clears throat> to come home at Christmas time and stuff like that. But, yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was interesting that all three of you guys moved to LA and made a, a big name for yourself. And I was wondering if you were aware of each I, other. I remember meeting Duff at a party. It, like it was like a fucking, I don't know if it was a sorority party in West LA. And it was something that just, it was tough and like just our bands, like, I don't even think Faster was even together yet, but Guns just started. And I think Duff just started playing with GNR. I can't remember about it, but I remember that was like, Duff's like, I'm from Seattle. I'm like, really? And then we just were like shooting the shit about Seattle. So I didn't know Then We were always like Seattle fans and yeah. Go yeah. Hawks and fucking all that shit. And same with Cantrell and stuff. We're all like see yeah. man. So I got one more thing and then we'll see if Jason has anything else for you. Um, I got to tell you, uh, I had a, a roommate, a friend of mine named Jimbo in San Antonio and we shared an apartment together and the apartment was called smash alley. And obviously we named it after <laughs> your song and we called it that for good reason because it was 24 seven. It was the party place in town and people still talk about it. So we oh, even had a little, you know how you slide the little, uh, your address under the peephole on the exterior of oh, the yeah, front yeah, door. Yeah. 
We took it off and wrote Smash Alley and put it back in there. So when you knocked on the door, you knew you were at Smash Alley. (laughs) And then when you walked in, you really knew you were at Smash Alley. (laughs) And that first album was the soundtrack to that place. I mean, we played it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Right on. Awesome. Yeah. That's a, that's That's a good segue. That's a good segue. I wanted to talk about that first record and did Rick Brody make that record with you guys? Yes, he did. And he's, he was really, he was really instrumental in get uh, us getting that deal. Cause he was like, basically, basically he came in we were like 10 months old. We fucking, we didn't even have enough songs for a record. This, you know, this, we were only together that long, and then there's a, he was like, I there's can, a lot of, I there's, I'm sorry to interrupt. There's a lot yeah, of things, right. there's a lot of things that you're saying that I can relate to. Like, I was in the yeah. toys six months, yeah, so it's a very was, similar, yeah. I think we even had, about might have had some of that also, conversation too. It was, it was like, that. yeah, back in, back in the early days, but when um, you guys came down, fucking sneakers, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. fucking sneakers. Yeah, just but, like uh, but but the whole thing about you saying that everything happened so fast. Right. We didn't have songs. Did. You didn't have songs. So uh, I was going to talk more about that. That's amazing. I, I just remember Rick Brody doing that record just from yeah. reading the liners and it, you know, retaining that useless rock and roll knowledge and until you have a fucking podcast where you can talk about it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We yeah. met him through Poison and right. and stuff and, and Vicky Hamilton and stuff. And right. and he was always super cool to us. And he had done like yeah. some stuff with fucking uh, new Ted Nugent and okay. some um, Accept. And oh, yeah. All right. Some other shit. So yeah. he, but he was really, he was like this, to me, it reminded me of this little Rick Browning. He was just always dressed to the nines and leather. And it just, wow. the way he, but he was fucking great. He's still a great guy. So, it's so like, I didn't but, know. But yeah, is he German? No, I don't. Oh, okay. I have no idea. But he, 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 just sounded, like, he sounded like you start talking like Colonel Clink. Yeah, but he worked, he worked, yeah, Hogan's Heroes. He worked, yeah. he worked with Accept, and then you, you just gave him a, a a side monitor, a uh, moniker, uh, you know, the <laughs> left, no, no clink. Yeah, and I give him a little monocle too. Yeah, yeah, know. Know. <laughs> you know, tell, uh, tell us about the making of that first record though, because I love the fact that, uh, you know, a lot of guys in bands create a, a debut album and you're, you're, you're going to always be your own worst critic. Right. But the, oftentimes, you know, it's obviously done on a shoestring budget in a crappy studio. But sometimes that's the best stuff, man. And for me, that first Faster Pussycat is in my top five favorite albums of all time. Before he answers, I want to, this is where I was going it and going for it. And, you know, that's just where I was headed with it is the tones and his uh, attitude and the, the, you know, the, the claws on that record, no pun intended. Uh, it's dirty. Yeah. It's exactly what you want it to know. sound like we didn't, you, yeah we didn't even we didn't even know what to do you know what i mean we're just in that we went into pre-production and at that time too like i said we didn't have enough songs we thought we had enough songs for the record and then right then bananarama came out with venus that was supposed to be that was our cover on the record we really? even playing that in the clubs like fucking kind of like a just a fucking rocking version of it and then all of a sudden so we're like, yoink. And then we wrote, wow. don't change that song in the rehearsal room that day. And we're like, okay, let's write a song. We just wrote it that day. Yeah. And then that was next wow. day we started the record. So, and, but we did it at, we did it at uh, Amigo, which was a Warner Brothers studio. And um, for, uh, for me, a studio is a fucking studio. I didn't really know. We did a demo. We did a demo uh, uh, at Music Grinder over on Melrose back in the old days. It was right there on the fucking no on the strip in front yeah. of the windows out there. People shopping and whatever, and just a recording console that you saw in like fucking movies and yeah documentaries with Zeppelin and shit. But I don't like I told you before. I don't. I didn't know how to work them. Right. And we're just like cool shit. People that were in the room that apparently knew what the fuck they were doing. Rick and his engineers, and then we're like, 
cool. Look at oh, it's got some video games like Keller. Yeah. Where's the rooms to bang bitches? You know, like, where's the banging room? Where's the room to bring the chicks in? And like, oh, okay, it's over there. Okay, we got that. We got we got fucking Galaga and asteroids and bang the bitch room. And pretty much that was all I needed. I didn't really fucking, I didn't know how to turn the knobs. I was like, it was cool. And then next door, Michael Wagner is in there with Keel. I don't know if it was Keel. Oh, wow. I know Ron was in there because Ron did some backups. Oh, right. That's where I got wow. to that's where I got to meet Michael and and yeah. and Ron and Ingbe wow. and fucking there's a bunch some other people came through. Ricky came in and did set they set up the scratching and we did some uh sampling back in the old days with the yeah. pussy cat. Yeah. Did that shit. That was all you know, everything was new. So it's like our fucking amps and shit. I didn't know how to record shit. So how'd you, I was how'd all you, hoping on everybody the, else. How'd you get the Tweety Bird? How'd you get that? Did you just say it? Brent it? said Brent said Pussycat and then we sampled it. And oh, then we fucking it, triggered it. Yeah. Kinda sounds like Tweety Bird saying it. Yeah, it's Brent. <laughs> yeah, wow, guy. I never knew that. Yeah. <laughs> Wow! Like, Pussy cat, and it was like poo, 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 poo. they just sampled it. Yeah, yeah. Like, tri- sweet. Triggered it. Uh, fun, yeah. fun fact: uh, the toys we used to cover Babylon. I don't right know. That's good. Cool. We used to cover that. I didn't. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, that's how it, your your record was obviously brand new, and that will also put a capper on how fast. Back to that, how fast that happened for us because we didn't have. A, we had two songs and then we played covers and I know, had, cause you, I remember that. I was, I remember fucking dangerous toys. I go, yeah, they're just new band. I go fucking killer. Cause you guys were new, brand new too. And I didn't know any of your shit was, yet. So it was, I was like, it, it was, it was, it was the end of 87. And next thing you know, the summer of the, the, the fall of 88, I'm out there hanging with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's how fast that was. Shit but, was fucking, it was fucking crazy. Yeah, but the first faster record, just one more sort of like trophy I want to give that record, is that it made a really uh, unforgettable impact on what, uh, when someone even says the name of your band, that's what they, I feel like that's the thing, whatever that thing you guys created in there, uh, that's what they think of. It was that's what a time. It was that's a what, time, and we were kids, and it was yeah. just fucking not a care in the world. No fucks given. No, None. No fucks you know? given. We were just like, let's fucking. We're. This is it. This is yeah. us at ten months old. Fucking writing yeah. a song because we didn't have it enough. We so we had to write one right then. Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't change that song. It just there was no really effort into writing that song other than let's do something that's kind of fucking cool <laughs> that was it. it's like whatever go, lyrically, lyrically yeah. i'm gonna go okay i'm gonna come up with something tomorrow i'll have it or, <laughs> and by the time we record the vocals i'll have something yeah <laughs> if isn't it's that, good i don't know i'm not it, guaranteeing you isn't shit it, isn't it interesting you're just sort of trying to create something that you think is cool that may not be cool as all cool at all and you're and just it, thinking that it's cool i know uh, and i would kid. guess that you're anything he you're thinks is like, cool other yeah, people uh, are going to think is cool it, you know? and then all of a sudden it is cool you know, it's interesting that you say goal. that because I would have guessed that the the last minute song was Babylon because it's sort of the oddball song in the mix. It would I would have never guessed Don't Change was uh, the song you wrote on the fly in the studio. Yeah, that was the last. That was the last yeah. Babylon. I started fucking with a before I even had a drum machine. I had to use fucking. I used to fucking. I borrowed. I had a turntable and a fucking little cassette deck. Kind of with the fucking wow. they hit the pull of buttons and I fucking I borrowed Ricky's fucking I don't know if it was Tone Loke or fucking yeah. I don't know one of one of the fucking Def Jam fucking records I don't know if it was I love that a cool day but it had a beat and I was just like okay I do it I record and then when it got to the end of the beat I pause it bring it back that was my drum machine I did like a fucking two minutes of that fucking beat just by doing yeah. that and then I wow. wrote the riff. Okay. Wow. 
Wow. Wow. Greg wrote that the lyrics, tone loke so record. Yeah. I wore that fucking thing out. Oh, it was fucking great. Loked after dark, getting loked. Dark. I was really good friends with Matt Dyke shit. back in the day. Oh, they were, oh. were delicious. He's like producing a lot of shit. He was delicious vinyl. Dude. Yeah. 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 Hey, can you see that poster over my shoulder, Tammy? I do. Yeah. I saw there that. I remember that shit. Yeah. I've had that since about 88. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Or, uh, my my story on and then and then we'll let you go. But I remember this girl I was dating at the time. She came over and picked me up, and I get in her car, and she goes, "Look, man, I know you you love Guns and Roses, but you're gonna love this." And she's got the first Faster record on a cassette, and I Never took knows. one look at it, and I just looking at the cover, I was like, "There is no way I'm gonna look, look at these guys." And then I heard, <laughs> and that guitar sounded like a friggin' buzzsaw. And then I heard that voice, and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And it's to this day, like I said, in my top five records, my copy, my vinyl copy is hanging on the wall right over here with all your autographs on it. It's a masterpiece. Oh, well, thanks, brother. Yeah, well, thanks, man. When I heard that shit, I, I heard that this shit is naughty. <laughs> uh, so back to don't change that song and then we're gonna say see you later here's the deal don't change that song hey guys we need another song that's that's ozzy Oz, that's ozzy and sabbath with paranoid hey we don't have enough oh, yeah. songs so they write paranoid it was their number one hit i know last minute that's so it. don't change that song Maybe so you guys was, didn't. I don't know if that was a single or considered a. a it, it was the first track. It was the it was first video. Release. Yeah, we opening track. Video, video right? Video. Yeah. Russ Meyer directed that video. That's right. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. And Far just out. to just to yeah. attest to the staying power of that song, you still have to play it every night you go on stage. So yep. there you yeah, go. We play it. We well, play it's it. a, it's an anthem. And uh, every time you do guys play it, when I'm in the room, you can't not dodge a chains, ah, ah, you know, just walking through a crowd. You can't not just shout that shit out. Yeah. And I think we, I think with the band and whatever now too, is just, we play it, we play it better than, than we did. It's so a meaner, it's, it's a meaner version. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit more, a little more heavy, but it's, yeah. it's cool. Yeah. We're a little, bit, a little bit more older, a little bit more older, a little bit more angry, at least us. And then we got the little kids that balance it out. The <laughs> oh, you mean your, your guitar players? Yeah. I yeah. the kittens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How's the little man Carlos? <laughs> he's good. He popped us in here for a minute. He's like, he's Kimberly's at our friend uh, Tony's with the pool. I go, I got a fucking interview to do. And I go, she can't take. He, he's in the valley, so it's like 104 out there. But oh shit! But that guy, she's she wanted to hit the pool, so I'm just like I'm kicking it with the pooch. She's in the cool little cool area of the our nice. place. So, well, hey, uh, hey, thanks for thanks yeah. for being, hanging out with us today. Anytime, we can do it again whenever. So, yeah, man. Uh, two and a half long years I've waited for this, and it was worth every minute. So thanks, you, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for the music. I can't wait for that book to come out. And I can't wait for new faster pussycat music to come out as well. And I know right, that's well, coming up soon. So let also let me know when you guys are out, make it out to La La Land too. So we'll do. Nice. I'll go out I'm going to be there or something. I'm going to be there at, at the whiskey with the toys, August 26. Coming oh, right. I'll up. be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. I got to go up to Seattle for a wedding. I'm going to take the motorcycle up, up the yeah. coast and shit on the 19th. And I'll be back probably the 24th. You're right. You're yeah. playing out the fucking whiskey on the 26th. Yeah. I will be there. Nice. Well, nice. I'll, I'll give you a, sure. I'll, I'll give you a shout. I'll fucking, yeah, I'll call fucking Jake. He'll hook me up. He'll fucking. Yeah. Right on. Cool. On behalf of my co-host, Jason yeah. McMaster, I'm Metal Dave Glessner, along with our special guest today, Tammy Down from Faster Pussycat on the Talk Louder podcast. 